Hey everyone, and welcome to Signals from the Frontline, your every Thursday recorded podcast brought to you here by Frontline Gaming. We are your hosts, Nikki D. Cannon. I'm not quite sure what shirt that is, fan and uh, producer extraordinaire. And I'm Seth the Mad Duck, your competitive correspondent. Nikki D., how have you been doing? First of all, Seth, I will note for everybody, it is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle shirt. It's a little I mean, it turtle shells. It was a button down, but I wasn't yeah. sure if there was if those were turtle shells or soccer balls. <laughs> but I figured I'd just I'd lob it up for you, and you could take it from there. Fair enough. Yeah. No, I'm I'm doing well. I'm I'm doing great. I've had a fantastic week. We'll note for everybody here that uh, Kicker is mm-hmm. not on the road, not in the air. I think he's I think he's on the ground officially at, at ACO now. Mm-hmm. I think he's officially in Atlantic City, yeah. if I understand our timelines correctly. I think so. So yeah, we're, we're without kicker for the show this week, but if you are going to Atlantic city open, you will see him. He is already Mm -hmm. there and he's already going to be getting ready to get set up. Uh, by the time that this podcast recording is, uh, or video cast is on YouTube for everybody, Mikey G will already be on the ground as well and setting up tables. Yeah. I was like, Mikey G gets in today. And then uh, when are you getting in there? Nikki I am I am driving. I will be arriving around 3 PM on Thursday. So just in time to get, uh, to get check into my room. Actually, no, because my roommate is not checking in until later and the room's in his name. But I will be getting in <laughs> along with uh, my folks around 3 p.m., which gives us enough time for them to check in. And then we'll be going to the FLG meet and greet at the exhibit hall from 4 yep. to 7.30. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, but it does, I'll note for everybody, if you're going to be at, at Atlantic City and you want to get a chance to play on the train sets and you know get to interact with the with this, the new static train and get that set up, you'll get a chance to do that tomorrow. Um or today, Thursday, because what you'll be listening yeah, to this is releasing point. Thursday. <laughs> so, yeah, Seth, I've been well. Uh, I've had a really good week, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll get into that in for a second. But how have you been? What's going on? What's new in your world? Uh, so I, I wasn't around last week. Um, I don't think I've done much in the way of 40K in the last week or two. Um, we're kind of in this, you know, we 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 did all of our pre-recordings. Yes, I, I did do some painting. I painted up, uh, <laughs> I t- painted up 10 orc knobs. Um, I, mainly because I have like, I have a bunch of knobs from over the years that I've painted and, and over the years, my painting skill has gotten better and my style yeah. has changed a little bit. And so I really just wanted 10 that were kind of like uniform in style and theme. So I decided to do them. Plus I have like boatloads of orc bits so I could kit bash all these guys with different weapon combos and armor combos and mm-hmm. heads. And so, you know, lots of fun stuff there. Um, so I did those, um, outside of, of, uh, of that, like, you know, we did our recordings for the yeah. new missions and the sisters codex and the gene store call codex. So we were working on a lot of that behind the scene. Um, and that just kind of like between that. And then I had to make the decision, unfortunately, to not attend ACO this year. I was planning on going mm-hmm. right up until about mid last week. Um, it just wasn't going to work out for me financially to, to be able to make that trip. Um, so I, I decided that, you know, the, the smart thing to do financially was not to go. Um, so I pulled out of ACO. Um, so you won't be seeing me there, folks. I apologize. I know I saw a lot of you people over the last few months saying that I, I would see you there and I've, I've tried to reach out and let everyone know, but, um, sorry, I can't make it. Uh, but, uh, that's, that's sort of taken the wind out of my sails right now for, for a bit, because we're kind of in this limbo, this in-between time. Yeah. Cause we, we, we know there's supposed to be a balance update coming. We know there's supposed to be new uniform, uniform field manual, like, points coming mm-hmm. we i expect i don't know but i expect that gw like they did with leviathan is going to release a pariah tournament companion that defines right. what combos go together so i feel like we only got like half the picture and i'm sitting here like trying to you know read the tea leaves on on my the half that we have and, and figure out the other half so i've kind of just been hanging tight on that front i've been playing some computer games watching mm-hmm. some movies i finally finished a uh, attack on titan okay uh, nice did not enjoy the ending. I'm sorry. Okay. I think sorry, that's kind of, I think that's kind of the norm for, uh, for, for that show. Right. I, I don't know. I think, so. I think it, had, it had a good opinion. message and I like the yeah. message and it's, it's very similar to other shows I've watched, but they were like, but what if we took that message instead of doing it in 40 minutes, did it across two and a half hours. And I was like, <laughs> that feels like attack on Titan to me. Um, yeah. so that was a bit longer. So anyway, um, yeah. Outside of that, been just it's it's the South. It's a million degrees. Um, <laughs> if you hear any background noise, it's because there's a fan right there. Even though my house is air conditioned and well insulated, yeah. my upstairs still gets uh, where where I record is still pretty warm here in the aluminum grit. So um, you got to have a fan running. So that's about yeah. it for me. 
Um, what's been going on outside all the uh, all the other stuff, Nikki D? Yeah, well, Seth, I'll note real quick because you you brought this up. So first of all, folks, if you're listening to the show here, uh, you should make sure to subscribe to the yep. YouTube yep. channel. Like the video, add some comments here. I know I've been trying to go through each week, and there's some of our uh, our regulars um, in there that uh, from, the yeah, there's, there's some of our regulars that were typically you know on our live shows that uh, would interact in the chat that are adding comments. So I'm still trying as much as I can to reply or to talk in our signals uh, Discord as well. So this is also your opportunity to join this the Discord that you can uh, find that link in the mm -hmm. channel description here. Um, and I would note here, Seth, you know, there's been some folks that have been posting lists already thinking, Hey, I'm already planning for the new meta. And you've yeah. been sure to point out to say, Hey, Hey, we, we, we know very little, you know, maybe yeah. half of it at this point. So it's, it's the part where I think it's, it's, it's kind of a weird place we've gone through with this, with addition changes or when seasons change. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, it always feels like it's a bit of, you know, spinning your wheels. If you're in a truck and you're just spinning your wheels in mud, like yeah. trying to light write list right now, it, it feels like it's kind of an exercise in futility to me personally, yeah. um, where I would rather spend the time because you know what else I, I got next to me? I, I got a I got a pile of shame. I got a backlog yeah. of models. And this is the time for me where I actually have been really focusing on, okay, well, what models can I get ready? What models have yep. I just got not have I not gotten to because they haven't been a good meta choice. But right now we, we don't know what the meta is going to be look like. So folks go wild with whatever you got in the back of your pile shame. Yeah, I, I updated, I had some uh, boys that I uh, never converted over to 32 millimeters. Yeah. So I, I, along with these knobs, I converted like 20 more boys over to, to 32s and rebase them. So yeah, just doing those little projects, kind of keeping you, keeping you going, keeping you, mm -hmm. you doing things. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I've been working on right now. Yeah. So Seth, I had a really great weekend of playing 40k mm -hmm. and so I'll, i won't spoil the lead for everybody i went to a local rtt at your hobby place in uh, alexandria virginia it's a mm -hmm. nice little store about 15 minutes from from where i live and and nate who's the to uh he is uh actually he's he's uh my, my driver if you will <laughs> uh for up to aco uh great guy absolutely you know love having I, for his I think have i met nate before you have yeah so fun yeah, fact about so. nate fun fact about nate he is um he is the one who had suggested and to Joe from more games live that Joe set up a Patreon in the first place. And he is Patreon subscriber number one. Yeah. To, I'm to now going to imagine Nate as baby driver. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, also a great movie. Yes. I, I I've actually re-added that to my Netflix queue because it recently got added to Netflix. So uh, anyways, so had a, an RTT this weekend and my idea was I'm going to run my death guard list. I think this is what I want to run for ACO list submission for ACO is Monday night, the tournaments mm -hmm. on Saturday. So I can do some play testing. Uh, and my list, I went three and oh, I went three and oh, I finished in third place for the event was, was nice. One of three people to finish undefeated for the event. Uh, the tiebreaker was battle points on that part. So I was the lowest scoring, uh, for, from a, a point standpoint, but had three amazing games played thousand suns round one, which have almost always been a tough matchup for me, but had a very, very solid win into that, into that game. And, um, took Magnus out early. And then from there, yes. just, they're, they're kind of expensive. They have a lot of expensive units and I'm death guard with sticky objectives. So I just was controlling the board. They had more units than I did at the end of the game, but what matters is scoring the points um, round two. And actually, if you're watching the stream, it's a, the picture on screen is me in my, uh, in my game two opponent versus uh, versus Tau was actually my favorite game. Uh, I think I won this game. The final score was 79, 72. Uh, and I only won this game because round five, I had Rodigus charge a ghost kill. Sweet, sweet. He, he, he kills the ghost, and the ghost kill is on an objective along with some breachers. He kills the ghost kill. The ghost kill explodes, and its explosion actually kills the rest yeah. of the breachers that are on the objective as well. Yeah. But but that destruction allowed me to take that objective, and I forget which mission we were playing, but it's um you get bonus points. Flip. To, yep. To so so our, our opponent scores it up, and it's like oh you know I got this many points for you know for what I control, I win the game, and it's no 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 we have to count up because at the end of the at the end of the at the end of the game. You're scoring for how many objectives and that puts it i think it was 79 72 in my favor and uh he looked at the scorecard again and he was at the mission instructions and he was like yep you win missed that part so <laughs> really really close game That's and then cool. uh, round three i played against renegade raiders chaos space marines um they're very killy but uh they are. Also, but but death guard are also very killy um so that was an absolute bloodbath but one that went really well in my favor so um had a great game with it had a great time and then uh, aside from that this weekend i've been doing some painting so i finished up uh, the last parts of painting, uh, my Chaos Rhino, two Plague Marines, and a Chaos Spawn, they were the last items that I needed to finish painting for ACO uh, this week. So I actually finished them on Tuesday night. So 
not not any final minute painting. I don't have to be doing painting as I'm in the car drive up or when I get to the hotel resort on Thursday. I was cutting it close, but they are they are painted and and they are done uh, and ready to go. Yep. All right. Well, let's get into some industry news. Uh, why don't you take us through the new Age of Sigmar launch box? Yes. Okay. So we did uh, get this update on the Age of Sigmar launch box. Launch box. So there was a, a notice. I forget if it was last week or if it was this week. Um, in between, it was in between our last show and this show. Yeah. But what we did find out, confirmed by Warhammer community, is that the Age of Sigmar launch box or Skaven Tide that will be available for pre order starting June 29th and then in stores July 13th. So we now have a confirmed window when that is going to be. Uh, we don't know prices yet. We obviously see from the pictures and have seen from yeah. GW um, what are going to be the contents that, that relates to that. And one of the other things that they have noted, and Seth, you may remember this from the Leviathan uh, starter set here in 10th edition, where the starter box contained a QR code and you can mm -hmm. select a faction. And, and for the Leviathan set, it was Space Marines or Tyranids. And uh, there's going to be a period of time where people can put a vote for who wins. And then uh, they will have a reveal <laughs> show. Games Workshop will be having a reveal show. And, and what they've said is that they will be showing off the new models that have not yet been seen. Yeah for that faction. And we, we did get a little bit of a taste. Is, is this the part today? where you petition everyone to vote for Skaven? Oh, yeah, it absolutely is. Which today, or Wednesday, June 12th, yeah. Nikki D got a little bit of a present in his inbox uh, when I went opened up my email during lunch and I saw that there's this new Brood Terror Age of Sigmar. It's essentially a clan molder, master molder. Names aren't very creative. That's been further mutated and molded together essentially Frankenstein's monster yeah, along with some good. clan scryer warp storm weapons. I, Seth, I told you pre-show, but I'll tell everybody here the day that this model is available in stores, I will be picking it up or actually, no, I won't be picking it up because I will be ordering it via the FLG link available in the show notes. And then when <laughs> it arrives to in my doorstep, I will be building and painting that model as soon as possible. The, the clan Sweet. molder stuff is absolutely my favorite uh, in Age of Sigmar and for the Skaven specifically. They've had very few plastic models, however. So the fact that we're now getting this plastic model character is fantastic. There's also an Age of, uh, or sorry, a Stormcast Eternal model that was also uh, previewed or, or, or characterized. Um, I didn't put it in the show notes because it's Stormcast Eternal and they're they're not my not my flavor. So I apologize if you are a fan of Stormcast Eternals. Uh, but you can also Look, check out some of, of the. You're okay items. to have a bias. This is yeah. this is our show. I'm very biased. forward with my bias and my love of the, the Skaven here. So yeah, Age of Sigmar. Key details though again, June 29th pre order for the Skaven Tide box. It'll be available in stores and everything else like that starting July 13th. So mm -hmm. that is now the timeline that we we are working on. And folks, when you get that box set and you open it up and you get your QR code. Vote Skaven so that I can see that Skaven preview as early as possible. That's what I'm hoping right. for. <laughs> well, moving on to our, our other pre-orders real quick. Uh, they did announce pre-orders for several Horus Heresy mm -hmm. characters. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, including some some very uh, interesting sculpts, uh, yeah. particularly from the Iron Hands from the Shattered Legion. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I remember reading those books once upon a time. Yeah. Um, they also did some command squads uh, upgrades for those, which are really cool to see. And of course, more Legion Imperialis. They've uh, more or less repackaged a lot of um, sculpts that were from different game systems back into Legion Imperialis um, with their flyers and things like that. So that's been cool to see. Yeah. All right. Well, let's hop into some FLG news. We're not going to get to Atlantic City news quite yet, but there's some other fun stuff going on for FLG. Um, we did last week launch our WTC terrain set. Um, this is a, an official WTC terrain set. Yes, it is. Uh, and this uh, product, like many of our other terrain, is fully paint or, or pre-painted, uh, full color. It looks mm -hmm. amazing. And proceeds of the sale of this terrain go to help sponsor both WTC and Team USA. Um, and importantly, I know because I as soon as this product <laughs> went up online, I immediately got the question from some friends over in the UK Yes, we do ship this product internationally. So if you're interested in picking up a set, go ahead and grab it. Um, it has been a very popular set. It has been going fast. Um, so make sure you get yours in because uh, uh, I can tell you uh, they've been working on building up the stock for some time. And uh, when it's gone, they're they're going to make more. Don't get me wrong, but you might have to wait a little bit. And you don't want to wait. No one wants to wait. We want our gratification now, Nikki D. Instant gratification. That is the American way. Yes. All right. Uh, Nikki D, before we get too far down the line into FLG stuff, do you have any nerd news for us this week? Nerd news, I'm going to keep it brief here. 
folks, because just the, the item here, and uh, this was the the big preview last mm-hmm. week, Star Wars, the Acolyte show on Disney Plus. So yep. two episode preview and uh, that was that was released and then new episodes Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern. So I, I have watched the first three episodes. I would say so far myself, Nikki D, I am watching. It is very, very much a slow burn. It is very much a uh, if you're expecting, you know, space lasers and starship explosions, not what you're going to get. Uh, very much more of a kind of murder mystery show more than anything hmm. else, I would say. Uh, but I am I am watching. I am committed and um, I'm going to keep watching. Aside right. from that, though, Seth, we, we, we covered this a couple weeks ago for Nerd News. Uh, this week, we also have release of The Boys season four. Season two. Uh, yeah, season, with four, right. season four, which it was also confirmed uh, this week, actually, for the boys that season five will be a natural conclusion for the show. Okay. So they, they are doing a fifth season, but that is going to be it for. But that is it for the boys as a TV show. There is no reason where spinoffs like Gen V or other shows might in that universe, in that universe yeah. might not continue. But season five for the main characters, that will be the final season of it. Uh, and then other than that, House of the Dragon season two, uh, that will be preview, uh, premier, premiering this Sunday. I won't be watching it just yet myself, just uh, just because I'm going to wait for a couple episodes to, to get to get added in. Also, for my wife and I not to be having different travel schedules, because that yeah. is a show my wife and I will watch together. All right. Well, there's your nerd news. Let's get into some Atlantic City Open uh, news. Here we go. Before, I, I got the meta breakdown, but Nikki D, do you want to give folks the the who, what, when, where, and why of, of Atlantic City things they need to know, particularly if they maybe didn't pay attention to their attendee email? <laughs> yes. All right. I'm going to take a deep breath here because this may, may <laughs> I'm going to try to keep it succinct. There's a lot of details, but as Seth mentioned, there was an attendee email that went out on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, be sure to check that because that has all the details that you should have to know for the event. So first and foremost, uh, if you pre-ordered any swag, make sure you've got your email. Um, it v- helps the team very much if you have that receipt or specifically the QR code in that receipt so they mm-hmm. can pull up exactly what you have. Uh, key thing about this, make sure you pick up your swag before before Sunday, um, just as it goes for cleanup and getting everything out on time. Uh, please make sure to do that. Um, that kicker would, would love you immensely for that. Uh, <laughs> As of right now, if you are registered and playing an event, make sure you are registered in BCP. Your email to- or your tokens to uh, register for the event specifically should have gone out about a week and a half ago. And then uh, from whenever the start time of your event is, you can check in 24 hours before that event. Please make sure, especially if you're playing in the 40K GT or Age of Sigmar GT, that you are checked in an hour before the event. That would really help the judges so we can have an on-time start for all of the events. Uh, those are those you are do not want to upset Jorge, the, the, the judge. He will come no. after you. He's a lovely man. We want to treat him with love and respect um, exactly. and have a great time with him. Um, if you have not been to uh, to the to the event before, uh, all we basically have the entire hall. It's called the Wildwood Room. It's in the conference center. So if you're in the main area, you're going to follow the signs to the pool area. You're, but you're you're going to go take basically a wide. Yep, you're going to take a, a wide right going around the pool and head into the conference center. There'll be big doors there for that. And you're going in the Wildwood Room. And there will from be signs there. from FLG leading yes. up to it to help guide yep. you. Yep. And as it relates to that, just noting for everybody, if you're trying to find the FLG staff and who they are, they will have a if it's FLG staff, they will have a black FLG polo like Seth has here in the video or a black FLG shirt. If you're looking for a judge for an event, they will have a yellow uh, FLG judge shirt. If you need help from someone from FLG and you don't know where to go, go and see Kicker or Mikey G at the registration desk and they'll be able to get you straight on whatever you may need uh, for for those items. Um, Aside from that, just schedule wise, I mentioned already meet and greet on Thursday from 4 p.m. to 730. Tables will be available for people to play games. There's going to be a cash bar and just a chance to meet the FLG staff, uh, judges, some of the folks like Kicker and myself will be there. Um, Games, I will note because they do need to lock down the hall. So if you are playing a game, they are locking the doors at 730, which means you need to be packed up and get ready to be walking out of that door at 730. So if you do want to get a game in uh, Thursday and test out the train, please be there at four o'clock or as early as possible. So you're able to do so with the time allotted. Um, but it's, I would take advantage of that if, if you can. I think Seth last year with ACO, yep. we had a lot. We had probably about a dozen people, you know, playing games on Thursday night, either just as pickup. You know, you may not be seeing your friends for a long time. Or you it's just also just like you said earlier, a good chance to mess around with the, the new fixed terrain layout. Yep. So definitely recommend that Friday hall is open 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, and that's actually going to be the same Saturday and Sunday. Breakfast is going to be from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. You mean uh, hall is open 8 to 9 p.m. 
8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. It was like you said 8 to 9. I was like, we have one hour to complete three one rounds. Hour Go! Day. Yep. So breakfast, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, the lines will be much, much shorter than some of the coffee uh, shops. And, and there, there'll be yep. breakfast sandwiches, breakfast burritos, coffee, any of the drinks that you need. Lunch and the snack area open from 11 a.m. to 4 Keynote: If you bought a ticket for the 40k GT or AOS GT, that does come with meals included. Um, for 40k, that's for Friday and Saturday. Uh, AOS, it's for Saturday and Sunday. You have to grab those between 11:30 and 1:30. So just yep. be pleased and be cautious. You should have time. physical vouchers for those, correct? Yes. Yep. Yep. And you there will should... need to present those physical vouchers to get your meal. Yes. So uh, please be sure to have those and to grab them when you can. Uh, having those parts set the bar in the hall will be open from 11 a.m to 7 p.m each day um, just as a note from kicker you know this is the casino or resort hall that's there so they have the bar there um, if you have outside alcohol or drinks or things like that um, they may stop you or they may you know check you for those sort of things so please just uh, keep that in mind um, as you're there and at the event uh, we don't want anybody getting in trouble uh, while while there and Aside from that, make sure you pick up your FLG swag for anything that you ordered. Uh, also, things that you're going to get, every attendee, you will be getting a uh, measurement tool from a company called Objective Controlled. So this is an easy way to measure distances, whether it's like three-inch engagement range or a nine-inch mm -hmm. uh, you know, deep strike. Um, these are from Objective Control. They're a New York-based company. You can check them out. We have a link in the uh, on the on the page um, and is in the email that went out. So please check them out. They've got a lot of great gaming accessories that I've been looking at myself. Um, also, the FLG Challenge coin, you can pick it up or present yours to get put in for the raffle events. Please do that anytime before Sunday morning. Um, other item, Duncan Rhodes, two thin coats, will have a paint and take station what yep. that means is that they will have some pre-primed models and you're going to be able to have a chance to paint some of them check out the paints so if you've got some downtime between rounds or you just got you, you want to go try this out um, yeah. i would definitely recommend have you have you used duncan paints to think yeah I've, I've used them I've, I've used them at their station actually when i was trying to find some oranges i liked mm -hmm. um they're always good just to, to sit around and chat and they they have their, their color triads um and it's always fun to sit there and paint there's usually some people that just kind of hang out there all weekend painting models yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. So aside from that, uh, those are all kind of the keynotes as it goes to the event. Um, aside from that, uh, you know, whether it's ACO and really all the FLG events, this is all really all about the community, right? FLG is for yep. the community, by the community. So if you see any of the staff, FLG staff, you see folks like myself or Kicker, uh, you see folks that have been at other FLG events that maybe you haven't met before, say hello, introduce yourself. We're all friends here. We're all here to play, you know, war games and play with our plastic miniatures or <laughs> resin or metal, depending on how old your miniatures are. But we're all here to play with our miniatures on a weekend and take the time out. So um, I would just say, uh, I hope, look forward to seeing everybody. Come say hello. Uh, hopefully I get a game against you, uh, and hopefully I get to play some, some great opponents here. I'm really looking forward to it, but it's going to be, if it's anything like last year's ACO, it's going to be a very fun event. So yeah, Seth, I think we've covered, that. we'll miss you buddy. Um, yeah. but I think we've got all the big notes here from it. You're going to give us a breakdown of the meta, right? And I'll just say, actually, before we jump into that, um, notes for other FLG events, especially Lone Star Open, which is the next upcoming event. We'll have news on that upcoming. This is really an ACO focused event because yep. or show because ACO is this weekend. So if you have questions on the other events, check into our upcoming episodes. But tonight it's all or ACO. Hop into our Discord and bug kicker. Or that yes, just or just bug kicker too. But yeah. uh <laughs> but the 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 meta, Seth, what is the all meta right. looking like for this event? So as usual, I, I, I go through and I, I check the the army comps for all of our events mm -hmm. um, and put it up here on screen. Here we go. Boom. That is the army comp and it's beautiful Excel wow. random colored allocated. Now, um, Nikki D, without looking at the screen, can you guess the top five uh, most common factions? OK, yeah, you would you'd put I, I put it on screen here, but I can effectively say I'm not looking at it. Um, and you had put the slide in. But factions, I would predict as being top, though. Okay. All right. Orcs got a new... Well, generally, I would say factions that got new codexes, which is Orcs, right. Chaos Space Marines. All right. People don't really love the Custodes Codex. Mm -hmm. That's kind of True. the initials. So I'm not going to say Custodes. Um, but so that's two right there. Um, mm -hmm. I would say Blood Angels has been very popular right now. So I'll throw Blood Angels up there. Um, what else has what else has been good um, for, for army options? Um Space Marines as just because they're a huge super faction themselves. Um, and then for a last one or a last group in there, I'll throw. Do I need another chaos? No, another Xenos, maybe I'll throw Necrons. Necrons are still good, right? All right. So so that's pretty good. You got three of the five. OK, uh, coming in at, at our, our number five. Um, well, I guess tied for number five uh, is Grey Knights and Tyranids, both with 12 uh, players in attendance. 
Yep. Okay. So Grey Knights, Grey Knights. I mean, with all the teleporting and stuff like that, they're also yeah. an army that transports easily Pretty for well. events. Yep. Um, I will say Tyranids. I think I I do know for a fact, and a shout out to uh, Bobby Soto from uh, my teammate from Legion of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I know for a fact that he's running a list with many Biovores uh, because he wants one last run at Biovores <laughs> with, with stupid with zero mines. OC yes. spore yes. mine action. So we could so be glad that's going away. Yeah, so we could be seeing a spike in Tyranids because of that, and people like Bobby. Yeah. Uh, for Tyranids. Okay. No. So, and we, so, we know, I think like folks like Dean Pritchard, who usually shows up, yep. right? Like he's playing Tyranids. Okay. I, I probably should have expected yep. that one. Uh, fourth and third are basically tied again. That's Necrons. Good job yep. at 14 yep. and Still guard good. at 14 armies. I was almost going to say guard just because, I mean, guard are always a popular faction, right? Yep. And, and I mean, what, especially for, for, for big events, even when they're not necessarily competitive or top tier, there's still an army that people really love. So that one, yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. Okay, but Seth, what do we got at the top two spots then? Number two, CSM, 15 yep. armies okay. uh, in attendance. And CSM has a pretty wide uh, yeah. diversity of armies With there. Eight um, detachments. Yeah. Yeah. And then number one, of course, the best orcs, <laughs> 22 orcs in attendance for this event. That is super exciting for me. Wait, um, how many? 22 out of 208. That's a lot of orcs. That's a lot of orcs. Um, which, yeah. which, you know, I, I did percentages, but it's like a little over 10% of the field yep. is orcs. Um, so I did go through and every major faction is represented. Um, we, we do, I believe, still do some best in faction awards and yep. I can uh, declare winners already in two races <laughs> um, because there is one Death Watch player and one Admech player. Great job, guys. Great job. Wonderful. Keeping the, keeping the, the armies going. Um, there's... After that, though, like there's like GSC S2 and Drakari S2, but then after mm -hmm. start getting in four or five. So yeah, after that, competition starts picking up. So um, now over here, Mr. Death Guard, how many mm -hmm. other Death Guard players do you think there are? Um, I I think there's eight in total. And I, 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 I'm I pulling that seven. because I think seven. Wait, we got seven uh, Death Guard players. Yes, yes. That's perfectly narrative. Seven. I know it is. That's yes. why I called it out. Death Guard players. Let's go. Great job, guys. We World didn't screwed it up. They had 11. Uh, yeah, that's too many. Three too many. T Suns screwed it up. They had ten. They were one off. So if one T Suns player drops, don't drop. But if one T T Suns player drops, we get that number uh, for for that. But, but well, I, Death I Guard, say, Death Guard got it. I like that. I will say T Suns. That was another consideration, just because I mean, yeah. Seth, the, uh, we saw obviously T Suns at Cherokee. Uh, where that was the Noah. They've been doing very well, yeah. Yeah, and T-Sense have still been winning some big events here. Uh, just mm -hmm. actually just in the last month, TJ Lanigan won Maryland Open, which is going to be, you know, a similar group of players um, that we, we've we got not that far of a drive, actually, you know, from those from those locations. So I, I do expect, you know, for, for T-Sense, maybe not as many players as the Orcs, oh, but T-Sense well, are going to put up a fight. Let's pivot into some lists. Ooh, okay. Because um, I, I did go through some lists, and I pulled yeah. some of the – the lists that I thought were interesting and some of the players that I think have a good shot. TJ, okay. uh, I know this, this list is, is been TJ has been running it nonstop mm -hmm. trying to refine it. Um, he has, he has openly declared uh, that winning ACO is on his bucket list. He is coming to win his list. And again, I love a good creative list name is please don't nerf dot, dot, dot. <laughs> uh, he's got Aramon on foot. Yep. Uh, an exalted source on disc times three. Those guys are annoying as hell because they can slow down your army. Yeah. He's got an infernal master. He's got Magnus the Red. He's got a demon prince with forbidden lore. Oh, and one of the infernal masters has arcane vortex. Uh, now, TJ, he like he runs real light on the rubrics. He's got a yeah. five man and a ten man. He's got a unit of ten Zangors. He's got a mutilate vortex beast. He's got a uh, blob of ten cultists. And then he's got three units of enlightened. Uh, this, this is a list that TJ likes to say, if he can think it, he can do it with this list. If he can think I need to do, I need to, I need to achieve this, this turn, there is enough tools in the toolbox in that list for him to do it. If yeah. he can just figure out what order does he have to activate what cabals and what abilities and what strategies and what shooting attacks he can do it. So, uh, he is. Uh, I think a, a, a favorite to win this event. Um, T Suns are very strong. I personally, for all, like last couple weeks, like I need to get some reps into orcs. I was like, we don't need to bother. You're gonna. We already know statistically that's a bad matchup. And yeah. two, T Suns are a kind of army where if it's they have a high skill floor. So like if you're not they do. the best T Suns player, you make some mistakes. The army falls apart really quick. TJ is very good and does not make many mistakes. So 
um I, I turned down all those practice games because I was like, it's, what if we're just going to waste two hours of you beating the stall out of me. So um, keep an eye on that. I think he's going to do really well. Um, remember that ACO is a little different this year. It yep. is a full eight rounds. There is no top cut. So in order to win, you probably have to go all eight rounds undefeated. And that's a big ask mm -hmm. for any player. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I know this is a list TJ has had it player that has had it play tested extensively. Again, I think it's the same list that he won Maryland Open with, and that was a six round event. So mm -hmm. two additional rounds. Obviously, there have been some changes with the with the meta off, uh, obviously, or most notably Chaos Space Marines um, that have been added since that time. So that'll be an interesting new challenge that he's going to have. But Seth, what do you have? What do you have next for us? Well, you, you, you mentioned uh... You, you mentioned uh, orcs there, I think. Yeah. Um, let's hop into orcs. There's a okay. couple of orc lists that I wanted to point out. Um, the first, Brad Chester has been playing orcs for the last few months. Mm -hmm. um, he, uh, I think, is basically taking the exact same list he took to Rocky Top. And I okay. want to call this out because it's a war horde list. It's not yeah, which is, boys. And that's it's the index, index attachment, yeah. right? Okay. Yep. And that the index attachment had very little changes, changes. from, it, the, from it, index it, Almost no right? changes. Okay. Almost no changes. So um, it's a very aggressive list. It's got a beast boss on foot. He's got boss Snickrod. He's got Gazgall. He's got like three war bosses. He's got Zodgrud running around with a pile of Gretchen. He's got a unit of beast snaggle boys and some trucks and flash gets. And it's just so much mega knobs and regular knobs and storm boys. And it is a lot of pressure coming at you. Yeah. And um, it turns out sustained one in melee for every unit. It's very is good. Still, is still yeah, good. Still very good. So I expect him to go far with this one. Yeah. Um, now it does have, unfortunately, orcs do have some tough counters in the meta right now in the forms of like T Suns, yeah. Grey Knights, and Death Guard. Um, and we did say that those are three of our more common armies so mm -hmm. it's it's uh it's not outside the, the realm of possibility that he hits a bad pairing early on but i think he can make a deep run um yeah. the other list i wanted to call out because it's the polar opposite is ian power uh he brought the beach boys surfs up which is a green tide <laughs> list featuring three pain boys three war bosses on foot a war boss in mega armor two weird boys one two three four five six units of 20 boys uh, a unit of Gretchen, a unit of Eganobs, and two units of Storm Boys. Um, interesting uh, that he doesn't have a vehicle for the uh, Meganobs to go in, so they're going to be hoofing it. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, it is uh, 120 bodies of, of OC2 sticky objectives, and then there's some Gretchen, some Storm Boys, and some Meganobs splattered in there somewhere. So yeah. um, I think this has some really good mission play. Uh, it does um, need to be able to hide uh, because those boys are durable, uh, yep. but they are certainly killable when they're out in the open. But I have played a very similar list to this on the, the fixed terrain layouts, and there certainly are plenty of areas to stash uh, all those boys. So uh, okay. Godspeed, Ian, and Godspeed to your back over the weekend, my friend. <laughs> um, I, look for, I look forward to seeing Ian and all of those boys on the table. That'll be great. All right. Let's uh, let's see. Who do I want to pull next? Let's talk about some CSM. You talked about CSM too. Yeah, I yeah. pulled two different lists out of here because uh, I think one is kind of what we were expecting. Okay. So uh, Ren and Renegade is, Raiders then. Yep, that's that. And Tyler Principio is playing that. Ooh, okay. He's got Renegade Rep Raiders, like three Master of Executions, yep. a Cultist Blob, some Legionnaires, some Rhinos for them to go in, some Predator Destructors because they get extra so OC good. when they shoot infantry and yep. they get extra or AP and they AP. get extra AP when shooting crap on objectives. Yep. He's got Havocs. He's got Warp Talents. He's got some Nurglings and some Plague Marines. It's kind of what we expected to see out of Renegade Raiders. Yeah. Um, and it's a very solid list. So I think you need to keep an eye on that. Okay. Uh, but the other one, I think maybe maybe a little bit different okay. uh, and i'm gonna butcher this pronunciation it's uh christian peck's list it's i am alpharis tor i think he tried to combine alpharius and Vashtor into the same name i like it yeah i like it creative okay yeah. let's get into it's, it's the list. soul forged warp pack yes okay so this is this is the Vashtor detachment this is the right Vashtor where detachment. Yep. they they, they got a, a terminator test. sorcerer yep. a couple three warp smiths Okay. A cultist blob, two units of legionnaires, a chaos liner. Remember, they can use that stratagem to make those things count as demons, uh, yeah. demonic vehicles, and that lasts yeah. all game. So yeah. he's probably going to be playing on that land raider. And then yeah. he's got two forge fiends, three mauler fiends, two venom crawlers, and a unit of 10 warp talons. Okay. I think that has a lot of the big hits, obviously, for yeah. vehicles, yeah. both of the demon and normal and, variety. And 
Yep. I've seen people using the the uh, the Soul Forge Warp Pack, and they've been using the Corn Lord of Skulls, mm-hmm. which is great. But this, I think, is the more like down to earth build, and it's still packing yeah. one what one two three four five six seven Demon Engines base plus it's eight when you turn the Land Raider into one. Yeah, um, it's still a lot of Demon Engines, and Warp Talons work great and everything. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm excited to see how this list does because I think this could be a, a cool way moving forward. Definitely. Let's pull. Who, okay. Let's let's, let's this one next. Uh, up next, uh, teammate of mine and uh, former or past winner of the LVO, okay. Matt Laura. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a list. It's Tyranids. It's yep. Vanguard onslaught, and its name yep. is "Why Does Doom Bolt Ignore Lone Op?" <laughs> I think um, I take it. I take it. Matt has played TJ or, uh, or probably of the thousands of um, he has a very uh, Vanguard onslaught is a very strong build for Tyranids. He has a different take on it. He's got Death Leaper. He's got Neuro Tyrant. He's got uh, old one eye. He's got two mm-hmm. winged primes and then he has 30 barb gaunts. OK, there were those are the shooting uh, gaunts yeah. that slow you down. Yep. He has the bio because, of course, stupid Tyranid players take a Barber. Um, he's got three lictors. He's got three Molochs. He's got some Neurogaunts, a couple of Neurolictors, and two units of warriors. Uh, he took a very similar list like this to, uh, I believe it was the Maryland Open, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think I know it was a Van- out. Yeah. I know it was the Vanguard detachment yeah. that he ran. He's, at been, that. he's yeah. been doing very well with that. He's been really trying to learn a new army, in this case, Tyranids. Um, and it's really kind of broadening our portfolio and on our team for uh, the Champs mm-hmm. Cup. So I'm excited to see what he can do with this. Um, cause he has been working hard to learn a, a new faction and get some results with it. So I think Matt's got a good chance to go far there. Yeah. We've got three, le- three left. Do you have any, uh, Seth, you, we have not highlighted any Imperium list yet. Do you have, you know, I do have Imperium? an Imperium list. Okay. I have an Imperium list by our, our friend and, uh, captain of Legion Extraordinary Gentleman, JC Watts. Hey. And, and and I pulled his out because one, I know JC has been working really hard to up his paint game. So I think yep. he has a good chance of going far on the paint scoring with this. Yes. But also the name of his list is amazing. Yeah, I, I already know what it is. Subscribe but yeah. to War Games Live or the fat man sits on you and spends five hours explaining his custom space marine lore. Why are you still reading this? Question mark. Hi, mom. Yeah. Uh, also, as I understand it, there there may be a War Games Live stream Thursday night involving yes, JC. Yes, yes. JC will be so, on the preview stream. Yep. So if you're if you're sitting at home or if you're driving to ACO, if you're driving to ACO, don't be watching it on your phone. But maybe you know ha- having it so you can listen to have it. your passenger put it on. Have his your phone. passenger exactly. Have your passenger have it uh, put it on their phone. But yeah, yeah JC we got a, we got around there. JC and his salamanders will be playing yep. Joe and I believe the space wolves. Yep. And he has an iron storm spearhead with a apothecary biologist, captain and gravis armor, a couple of three tech Marines an aggressor yep. squad, a assault intercessor squad and eradicator squad, two gladi- gladiator reapers, an infiltrator, two land raider redeemers, <laughs> a unit yeah. of scouts and the Calidus assassin. So pretty sweet yeah. combo there. Expect him yeah. to do, do well with it over the weekend. This, this area, the meta, the Northern Maryland, Southern, Eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey. It's been an area that's been pretty populated uh, based on train setups and just some of the meta um, for having two plus land raider redeemers. So it's one of those things where you kind of have to tech for it. JC definitely. And that's part of his list design as well. Just just knowing uh, JC is that he's thinking, oh, hey, I want to want to I want to run them. I also know how need to know how to beat them. Uh, yep. so that is something where if we see a list, a Space Marines list um, in the in the top runnings here for it that has a couple of land readers, I will not be surprised come Sunday if that is the case. All right. Now I got one more one more player I want to highlight. Okay. Um and this one I I I think it's a very strong list still, but I think we have a potential here for maybe I haven't even seen the army, but I think this could be our best painted. Matt Aaron if oh, yeah. Remember, has been doing very well in the past few years in the hobby track. In fact, two years ago won the hobby track with his uh Death Guard. Yes. Uh, he is switched factions. I know he has Necrons now. Yeah. Uh, and he's got an, and then just looking at this and like, I'm knowing Necrons. I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to see what Matt did with these models. He's got a Nightbringer, a Plasmancer. It's a, it's Canopic Court. Nightbringer, yep. Plasmancer, Technomancers. You got two of them. He's got a unit of mortals. He's got three Doom Stalkers. He's got two units of Wraiths. He's got a unit of Flayed Ones. He's got a couple of Lone Low Curse Destroyers. He's got a big block of Scorpec Destroyers and he's got two units of Tomb Blades. Solid list, solid player, but I need to see some pictures. Uh, stat, 
sad, yeah. sad, 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 sad. I've seen some in progress pictures on Matt's Instagram, and mm -hmm. there are some amazing conversions that he has already started to work through. So, but it's been very much a work in progress sort of item. So Seth, I'm very excited to see it in person. Matt's an amazing hobbyist, a yep. uh, previous ITC winner for the hobby track as well. So this is a, an item where, you know, he is a, a guy localish to New Jersey. This is mm -hmm. his area. This is his meta. This is kind of his big hometown home tournament uh, as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing his army and, uh, and seeing him. I mean, he's been playing death guard, last two or three years. So it's going to be a little bit yeah, odd different you know? to see him with something else. Yeah, for, for sure. But I am yeah. excited to see speaking it. of death guard. There's this list here called contagion starfish and the foul infusion flavored water uh, by our own Nikki D. And uh, why don't you take us through the list you're bringing to the event? Yeah. So uh, my list and first of all, list name here, uh, the Legion of Extraordinary Gentlemen. We we have a bit of an interest in the band Limp Bizkit and uh, we, we, we have some plays on uh, on that, but that was the inspiration for, for my list name. It's the same list that I ran this weekend at the RTT, and it was an item where it just felt good, Seth. It had it mm -hmm. gives me some trading pieces. It gives me a couple units uh, um, that really have some punch and some punching up power. It, I've got a little bit, a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit of indirect, um, so it has to keep you know opponents honest based upon that. Uh, but for, for my list, I've got uh, two biologists, putrid virus. Hold, hold on, a little bit of indirect. I see two plague burst crawlers. I see yeah. having. All right, whatever. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just two plague burst crawlers. I could, I could do worse. Uh, I have it's two, but I mean, I don't have Mortarian for or or the Lord of Virulence so that's there. But uh, right, two right. biologists, putrid fires, two foul blight spawns. They're each going in a ten man unit of plague marines and with rhinos. That's pretty standard um, for Death Guard list. Um, and then I've got uh, Typhus. He's my warlord. He just runs alone along by himself and basically teleports in turn two or turn three, does some mortals, tries to make a charge. Usually I'm trying to put him somewhere where he is going to be. Um, there's no good, really good weapons, but so somewhere where he can go and harass the opponent's flank or backfield um, having that part set. Um, I've got a Death Guard Sorcerer and Terminator Army armor. Seth, do you yeah. know what this guy does? No, there's, there's some lists that have done him uh, that have that have shown him, but he's got a psychic attack and uh, the normal profile or if I do the hazardous profile, it's 2d6 shots at strength six minus two one damage. Once per game, I can increase the strength of that so it becomes strength eight and damage right. three. So him and he goes in unit death shroud terminators with so they get the bodyguard rule. So minus yeah. one to wound if it's higher strength, but they flame. He shoots with these 2d6 shots at strength eight minus three um well minus three if i'm in the you know contagion range and i and i choose that um but three damage so that's very nice uh he also has a psychic ability where in combat or in the fight phase that unit could be minus one damage Ooh. so they become a little bit so same sort of thing hey they yeah. go into a backfield and they harass and they and they, they do that um aside from that a five-man squad of plague marines they basically just try to run up the middle um just yep. by themselves mostly just because i had the points to spare uh a unit of chaos spawn same sort of thing they run up early game try to be an early trading piece a unit of cultist they get a scout move early uh pre-game a unit of pox walkers and a bloat drone two plague burst crawlers uh two units of nerglings and then my little baby boy rodigus, <laughs> rodigus. the great unclean one uh when i when i had after the rtt on saturday kicker had asked me who was my mvp who was the best unit it was rodigus typically what i'm doing with him is he is rapid ingressing turn two he goes somewhere where they don't have a lot of big weapons that can deal with a, a great unclean one. Uh, mm -hmm. But between his shooting, his fighting, and then the fact that he also limits opponents' movement and OC, he really can kind of shut down their side of the board. Nothing really can kill him. And that allows me to pivot the rest of my army to basically pincer my opponent kind of into a corner. That's the general idea. Um, it's a lot faster. Like it. It's a lot faster than what people think Death Guard should be. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of the, it's it's the sort of thing where Death Guard you're expecting them to kind of oh slowly make their way up field. They've yeah, got no, they're shooting. not because they're riding in transports. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And teleporting in, you're like yep. wait wait you were slow. They're like not anymore. Exactly, that's the idea. So I really like it because I mean right I play demons I play blood angels I want to be fast and want to be aggressive. This yep. is kind of a Death Guard way of doing it, but I'm reducing your toughness. I'm reducing your armor saves with contagions. I get Prodigus that rapid ingress. So for me it just gets to be it, it just gets to be a lot of fun and and ultimately this is a. a an army or a list it's really based on trading which is mm -hmm. also to me just it makes the game more interactive right like you have to come and punch me you have to roll the dice i'm going to come and punch you back so it is an item where it's it is to me i find it to be an engaging game between me and my opponent um which is ultimately what i what i want to do so yeah. that's my list sounds like a good time
Um, I personally don't want to see it because uh, <laughs> I. You, do you have nerglings? We don't. Do you have nerglings? Two, un- two units of nerglings. Yeah, okay, I don't yep. want to see it. I, 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 I get room. Nope, yep. nope. I don't want to see yep. that. Stupid make my orcs hit on sixes. That's yep. dumb. I hate yep. it. Yeah, get it works very. That works very well. The GW nerf it. Yeah. I don't know. Leave the nerglings as there. But yeah. So it's. No, it's nerf it. It's list. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. So, Seth. You know, we kind of went through the rundown. Um, yep. Do you do you have a? I mean, we we talked about some players that you think are. I'm, certainly I'm calling be my shot. I, TJ has been putting the work in. T yep. Suns are are in a very good position mm-hmm. to to play the meta. Um, I I think that's my vote. I'm putting my money on TJ Lanigan with ta- Thousand Suns going the distance. Okay. Uh, by the nature of this, I I mean I I'm gonna have to choose somebody a different that's here from it. Um. Actually, Seth, one person I'm going to call out because they can always be a perennial contender and they have knocked off some some top competitors at FLG events. Yeah. A player that's been around in the meta for a long time. They are on the registration list um, that's there and bringing Necrons, but Alexander Fennel. Yep, that's right. Alexander Fennel is showing up playing some Necrons. Yep. So, um, yeah, so Al- Alex has been a, a longtime player in the community. And, and um, he has had the habit of showing up and knocking people off at events. Very good point. <laughs> He's mm. also had the habit uh, of sometimes knocking off people and then departing before uh, the event yeah. finishes <laughs> because he has to get home or something else like that. But, we call that um, the fennel. Yes. You, you the gave fen- him the, the fennel. fennel. Yeah. The, the fennel maneuver. But Alex um, and, and Necrons, we know Necrons are still good, right? Yep. Yep. Canoptic Court is still good. We, we've seen that even at the most recent FLG events or even at Cherokee, right? Cherokee, it was Thousand Suns versus Necrons. Um, now, the meta has adjusted to Necrons a little bit, so that that I could see is a bit of a downturn, but Necrons are still going to be strong. Um, it would not be, surprise me to see them as some of the top competitors day three by any means. Yeah, I think that that's a very good call. Um, I think with the, the number of players, I think the math works out that yeah, we should we right, we definitely only have one undefeated. I think there's 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 maybe a shot if like all the undefeated drop that a, a seven and one wins the event. But yeah, I mean, no one wants to be betting on on winning with seven and one. So you know, none of these players are are betting on losing a game. So I think you know your best shot is to win them all. Yeah. Um, I certainly think it's- Necrons have that option though. Yeah, and well, and that's a key thing for an event like this because certain events, depending upon their size and how tiebreakers are done, there are certain events where players are incentivized to build a list that can 20-0 an opponent in WTC yep. terms. Or there are certain lists where, hey, I need to be able to score 100 points every game because it's based on battle points. An event like this, there's likely to be one true winner. So it's yep. a sort of item where, hey, if you win everyone, you know, the, 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 the eventual winner for this event, they can go 8-0. And they might never score more than 70 points in a game, right? Right. Like that could be a feasible, yeah. you know, route for it to go. So it's just, hey, regardless of what your opponent is, just be ahead on the scoring. Just be in the green when that score gets submitted. Yeah. That's going to be I the only thing that point. matters for this event. All right. Well, I think that's all we have for ACO. And I think that's all we have for tonight. Um, yes. we did- we're a bit of a longer show with us doing the ACO breakdown. So um, we'll be back next week to go over ACO results uh, and we'll hopefully be catching up on our community spotlights. Then Um, Nikki D final thoughts for the night before you pack up and hit the road tomorrow. (laughs) Yeah. I've already got my suitcase packed. Army is packed. I need to, pack up a few things uh folks listening to the show here you might have already heard my dog barking i need to pack him off to get him dropped off at doggy daycare tomorrow morning uh so i got a few things to pack tonight and being ready to go but um, again i would just say if you're going to be at aco come by thursday for the meet and greet say hello um i will be wearing flannel at the meet and greet seth have already gotten that pack that is my call sign i have to have that I i will and throughout the weekend i will be either wearing flannel and or my legion of extraordinary gentlemen uh jersey i will be wearing one or both no no i was like both no, because that would be damn hot. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, the one thing, though, about conventions and like convention centers is they once things get going, they really pump in the air conditioning sometimes so they can get a little bit chilly um, yep. at, at times. And that's where having it I can, you know, I'll have my backpack if it gets too cold or if it gets too warm, I can put the flannel in the backpack anyways. But come yep. say hello. Um, we're really looking forward to seeing everybody at the event. It's going to be a great time here. Um, one of the last big events for the Leviathan mission packet, right? Yep. Yeah, I, th- I I'm fairly confident we'll be using uh, Priya for LSO. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, at least for FLG, yeah, this is our last go around with Leviathan. Yeah, yeah. So Leviathan, it's been it's been great. Had a lot of fun with it here for the start of tenth edition. So yep. um, we'll 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 have a great time for the event. Yep. Well, we thank you so much for joining us. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Signals from the Frontline. Have a great night, and we will see you at ACO night.